Welcome to Gothic Remake News. Hey everyone, today we got some exciting updates on the long-awaited Gothic Remake. Buckle up, because I'll be breaking down the biggest highlights from the past week, including the Gamescom event in Cologne, where both THQ Nordic and Alchemia Interactive made some major appearances. We'll also dive into the gameplay feedback from Twitch streamers who were lucky enough to get their hands on the exclusive demo from the comforts of their own home, no less. We'll talk about the visuals, the feel of the game, UI updates, voice acting, sound effects and more. And stick around until the end because I'll be sharing my personal thoughts on what I think still needs more tweaking and was just right. First up, Gamescom. The massive event kicked off on Wednesday, August 21st in Cologne, or as the locals call it, Köln, in Germany, and wrapped up on Sunday, August 25th. If you haven't been keeping up with the Gothic remake buzz, let me tell you, you missed on, on something very, very big. For those lucky enough to attend, a special demo of the game was available and hundreds of fans from across Europe jumped up at the chance to try it out. This demo isn't public yet, so those who were there definitely got a sneak peek. Now I wasn't there myself, trust me, I wish I had been, but I have a good friend who was, and he shared his experience with me. He got 15 glorious minutes to dive into the Gothic remake demo. While that might sound short, it was long enough for him to get some serious wow moments and a few meh moments as well. What's really cool is that THQ Nordic had a small team on the ground along with the representatives from Alchemia Interactive. Big names like director Reinhard Poliche and Kai Rosenkranz were there in person engaging with the community. They were answering questions left and right and even listening to fan feedback on what could make the game even better. Now for those of you who weren't there, no worries, I've got you covered. I'll be breaking down everything my friend noticed about the demo, including what worked and what needs more attention. And of course, I want to hear your thoughts too. Alright, let's talk about what we've learned from the Gothic Remake demo. Now, some of you might be wondering, what exactly was in this demo? Well, to put it simply, it wasn't the full gothic experience just yet. A lot of pieces are still missing, from unfinished scripts to incomplete soundtracks and even certain elements being deliberately excluded from the demo itself. And for those of you hoping to play as our beloved nameless hero, not this time I'm afraid. Instead, we were giving a glimpse into the world through the eyes of Nyrus, the infamous madman from the sect camp who was driven man to the brink by the sleeper in Gothic 1. Quite the departure from our usual protagonist, right? There's been a lot of chatter about this demo across various platforms and if you've been keeping an eye on YouTube, you've probably seen some of it. Game insiders like Kai Rosegreitz and Reinhard Poliche have been popping up everywhere, offering insights to the state of the game. In fact, Kai left a really interesting comment on YouTube shedding some light on the demo's purpose. Check this out. The Nairus demo is realized as a mod to the Gothic Remake base game. We're using it to test the modding capabilities. This means that the underlying gameplay world and tech is actually the almost current state. The mod injects content changes, dialogue and quests. It was great for us to see that this mod from last year is still actually forward compatible with the latest build, so that's good. It also means that your gameplay experience is representative of our current state in most regards. Basically they're using the demo as a testing ground, particularly to see how their modding system holds up. And despite this demo being over a year old, it's still compatible with their latest build. So while it's a work in progress, it's still pretty close to what we can expect in the final game. But let's address the elephant in the room, the movement. Many fans, including those who played the demo, mentioned that the movement felt a bit sluggish or less responsive than expected. Kai touched on this as well. The impression that movement generally feels less direct than it should is due to many interwoven aspects which are still being tweaked. This is a question of balance between realism and perceived responsiveness that we are still working on. Since we're all playing the game on a daily basis, we have already adapted to the current state. I personally can say that it feels fluent to me because my brain is already trained to compensate for the apparent delay that you have experienced. 
So your feedback is very valuable and it was brought up by quite a few others as well. So it sounds like they're aware of their movement issues and they're actively working on it. The developers are balancing realism with the need for responsive controls and the feedback from the demo players is helping them fine tune it. That's pretty assuring, right? What do you think about the idea of playing as Nyrus? And how do you feel about the direction they're taking with the movement and modding system? Let me know in the comments, I'm really curious to hear your thoughts. Time for traversal, sounds and some streamer impressions. One thing that developers are clearly passionate about is freedom of traversal. In the Gothic remake, if it looks like a 90 degree edge, there's a good chance you can climb it, even if there's no obvious prompt or indication. It's all about maintaining that immersive open world feel. But then there's the wooden car situation. If you've seen or heard about it, Reinhardt explained that the cart isn't exactly a 90 degree surface, which makes it tricky to traverse. Think of it more like an elevated box filled with stuff, and depending on the angle you approach it, you might have to climb over a small ledge. To smooth things out, they blocked some of these oddball traversal moments in the demo with collision boxes, just to keep things running smoothly. Now about those missing sounds, well, Kai owned up to that one. Apparently there was a bit of a mix up. He assumed that this year's demo would be on par with the last year's version, which didn't include certain features like bows and specific creature animations. So when he found out late in the game that these would be included, it was already too late to get the sounds right. He tried to fix it last minute, but things didn't quite pan out as planned. Classic case of underestimating the scope. So yeah, there's plenty of info out there on these little details, if you're curious, I definitely recommend checking out your favorite gothic YouTubers for more comments and responses from Kai and Reinhardt. But let's not dwell too much on this. Now on the streaming side of things, and a few people who really got the community buzzing. There were only a handful of streamers who got early access to the demo on Twitch, but the ones who did really made an impact. Mad Joker and Cock Carnage in particular stirred up a lot of discussion with their larger audiences, and they had some solid points to share about the game. Let's rewind to the very beginning, the characters you get to interact with in the demo. Now one moment that really stood out to me was when I saw Diego for the first time in this remake, and wow, let me tell you his voice acting is on point. I wasn't expecting to be that surprised, but I actually was. I even asked a few friends for their take, comparing the original Diego to his remake counterpart, and the con ensues was clear. The new Diego takes the cake. This new voice feels much deeper and more commanding, giving off a real sense of authority. It's as he's lived through some serious stuff and earned his respect as the number one shadow in the old camp. That slight shift in tone makes him feel like more of a leader rather than just another character in the game. And hey, miss a line with Diego, and he's quick to remind you he's not someone to be messed with. Heh, <laughs> what a silly bastard. Classic Diego. Then just a minute later, you stumble upon another conversation, this time between Diego and Whistler, one of the shadows from the old camp. This is where things get really interesting because you can hear a noticeable difference in the accents and tone, something I've been hoping to see in this remake. Let's check it out together. No idea. Just three? I would have thought it was worse. So, we're just gonna let them keep fucking us over? That's right, just as we do with them. Did you notice the ore barrels from this month's batch had an extra thick bottom? <laughs> Are you saying... That the barrels had an extra thick bottom? That's all I know. It's all a game, Whistler. They trick us, we trick them, and so it goes till the gods bite the dust. You're a proper poet. Well, fuck it. I'll double check the batch and get this ready for the convoy. Good. Cheers, Whistler. Sure. I think that was very cool. Character interactions and accents. One thing that really stood out in the demo was how different the characters felt from one another. Not just in personality, but in the way they spoke. Take Drax from the new camp, for example. He sounds exactly like the type of guy you'd run into out in the wilderness, someone who's spent years hunting animals and knows his way around. 
right off the bat he's offering to help you, but of course there's a catch. You scratch his back, he'll scratch yours. What's more interesting is when Nyrus comments on Drax's accent, noting that it doesn't sound like he's from Corinus, or should I say Carinus. Yeah, I was a bit thrown off too, they might have switched up the pronunciation of the city's name, which is confusing, but it could just be a minor change. Drax's accent leans more towards East American, while his companion Ratford has a distinctly Southern British accent. The mix of regional voices really adds up some diversity to the game. Then we meet the last character of the demo, Kyrgo. Now, if you remember Kyrgo from the original Gothic 1, he was a gladiator in Scatty's arena, decked out in basic guard armor. But here's the curveball. In the remake, Kyrgo speaks with the Hindi accent from India. This was a bit of a surprise, considering his original character didn't give up that vibe at all. He talks about his past, how he lived in Corinus with a woman named Rosa, and how those were some of the best years of his life after leaving Varand. It's a cool backstory, but it also got me thinking. Weren't the people of Varand supposed to have more of a Middle Eastern inspired accent? Maybe I'm wrong, but feel free to correct me in the comments if you think otherwise. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this one. So to sum it up, the demo lets you interact with about 5 different characters, each from a different region and camp. It's not a massive amount, but hey, it's just a demo and it's giving us a taste of the world they're building. Now let's talk about mechanics. First off, the camera. The developers have shifted it slightly to the right, which feels more in line with modern games like Skyrim or The Witcher, and honestly I'm not sure how I feel about that yet. While it gives it that familiar modern vibe, I kinda miss the old center camera from the original Gothic. You know, the one that was right behind the character and gave you that wide field of view. Hopefully, this isn't the final version. If they give us an option to toggle between camera options, that will be a game changer. As long as it works smoothly, of course. One thing they nailed though is the cutscenes. They've gone full cinematic with them, and I'm loving it. When the camera zooms in on the person talking, while the backdrop blurs out, it really gives you that immersive movie-like feeling. It draws you into the moment, making you feel like you're actually there in the conversation. It's a small touch, but it makes a big difference. Let's talk about some mechanics and animations. The good, the bad, and the strange. Starting with the object interaction. Nyrus picks up items in the open world in a rather odd way. He just waves his hands over them, almost like he's casting a spell. I've gotta be honest here, I'm not a fan of this approach. I've seen it in other games before, and while it's functional, it kinda breaks the immersion for me. It's a small detail, but it matters, especially in a game where immersion is key. In the original Gothic, the nameless hero actually reached out with his arm and hand, giving you the sense that he was really picking something up. It felt more grounded. That's the kind of detail I'd love to see Alchemia bring back. Not just replicate, but improve on. I mean, it's not hard to animate, right? There's already a button prompt, so why not give us an animation that also feels more natural and satisfying? Let's move on to character movement now. The team at Alchemia has clearly put a lot of work into making movement feel fluid and natural. They're using motion capture technology to mimic real life actions, which is a huge upgrade from the original. Remember how gravity in the original only seemed to exist when you were falling? Yeah, this time around it feels like they've really got it dialed in. There's a sense of weight when you run, sneak and even just walk. While we haven't seen much of the sneaking mechanic yet, it's exciting to know that they've got the tech to make it more than just a static crouch animation. Speaking of which, Reinhardt did confirm that pure crouching as we saw in the playable teaser won't be in the final game, but sneaking will still be something you can learn. I'm curious to see how that plays out. And let's not forget swimming. It's been drastically improved, and it's no longer the hassle it was in the original. If you remember how clunky swimming could be, well, 
forget all that. Moving through water feels smooth and intuitive now. And here's the kicker. You can actually pick up items that are on the riverbed as you swim. So yeah, you might find yourself diving into lakes more often, searching for hidden treasures and artifacts that could be worth a small fortune. I think it's a cool addition that adds a bit more depth, pun intended, to exploring the world. Time to talk about graphics. Sharp, but balanced. Alright, let's dive into the graphics, one of the more debated topics. Personally, I think the graphics look sharp. They're not pushing the boundaries of what's possible, but that's intentional. I think Alchemia wants the game to be playable on older computers, which I respect. According to Reinhardt, they've transitioned to a more modern engine twice by now, and they're currently working with Unreal Engine 5.4. It's been holding up really well, and while it's not the absolute peak of graphical fidelity, it's still impressive. One area I was worried about in a previous video was facial communication. Now while it's not 100% perfect, I'm actually pleased with the outcome. Characters not only open their mouths when they talk, which should be a given, right? But their jaw movements sync up with their words. It adds up much needed realism, which honestly is a big win for immersion. The demo didn't disappoint when it came out to environment either. We've all seen the trailers showcasing that lush nature and vibrant surroundings, and the demo held up to that promise. The graphics might not be the sharpest you'll ever see, but they're beautiful. And if Alchemia wants to keep improving them, by all means, let them. I say the more polish, the better. Now it's time to talk about the most important aspect of the game, combat. The trailer hinted that the combat would be difficult to master and very different from the original Gothic. And after watching the streams and hearing feedback, I can confirm that it's true, but maybe not in the best way. The combat does feel very different and while the weapons have that satisfying weight to them, the overall experience feels, well, a bit clunky. It's not entirely responsive to your keystrokes, which can make fighting feel sluggish at times. This is something Alchemia should definitely focus on smoothing out. Combat should feel fluid and responsive, especially if they're aiming for difficulty. The challenge should come from mastering the mechanics, not wrestling with them. At the end of the demo, you could have learned the basics of combat from Kyrgo, but from what I've gathered, there's not enough time or learning points to really get the hang of things. And here's my advice for Alchemia. If there's going to be a combat teacher, let them teach you in a way that feels organic. Not just a bunch of tutorial text popping up on the screen. Making part of the world like someone you'd actually listen to in real life. That'll go a long way in keeping the immersion alive. One cool thing worth mentioning is that the weapon you could get in the demo had a written attribute on it, hinting at the return of damage types like slashing, piercing and crushing. This was present in Gothic 1 and 2, but back then we didn't see it explicitly labeled. We just knew that hitting a stone golem with a mace did more damage than a sword. And I'm glad they're bringing that detail back, it adds an extra layer of strategy to the combat system. User interface and crafting, keeping it simple. One of the things that always set Gothic apart from other RPGs was its super minimalistic UI. And from what we've seen in Koch Carnage's stream, Alchemia is staying true to that tradition. Honestly, this is a breath of fresh air in a world where most modern games clutter your screen with bars, icons, minimaps and other things. In the demo, all we saw were the health and mana bars, and that's exactly what we want from a Gothic game. There's no minimap, no glowing arrows pointing you where to go, and no constant pop-ups telling you what to do. You have to find the map if you want to know where you are, and even then, you'll need to press M to check it out. It's an old school approach, but it works. It forces you to engage with the world and rely on your own exploration skills, rather than letting the UI guide you every step of the way. Let's touch on the inventory system before we wrap this up. Just like in the original, the inventory seems to be limitless, so there's no weight restrictions. Love it or hate it, it's satisfying true to the roots. The user interface for accessing the inventory though has been revamped. It's clean, 
organized and much more intuitive than Gothic 1 and 2. It's a nice change, making it easier to find what you need without all the clutter. Now, I haven't seen the quest log book that we were promised, but I'm hoping that that's still on the way. As for crafting, they've made some quality of life improvements. For instance, cooking has become more streamlined. Instead of tediously cooking each meal one by one, you can now cook several meals at once. Thank you, Alchemia. That is a welcome change. Smithing, however, sticks to its classic roots. It's a step-by-step -step process just like in the original games and Risen. You'll heat the blade, hammer it, cool it off, and sharpen it, all individually. While some may find this a bit old school and tedious, it's got that satisfying, immersive feel for those of us who appreciate the process. Final thoughts? So, what do I think? I think Gothic Remake has the potential to be phenomenal. It's building on a solid foundation, and while there are areas that need some work, the passion of the developers is evident. These folks have Gothic etched into their souls, and they understand that anything less than perfection won't cut it with this community. If I could boil it down into a few simple points for Alchemia, well, refine the climbing mechanics, smooth out the combat, and ensure there are no unfinished quests or inaccessible areas. Do that, and you've got yourselves a forever game like Skyrim, especially if modding will be available. I wish I could have experienced it all firsthand at Gamescom in Kalan, but life has its limits, and for me, travel just wasn't in the cards this year. Still, I'm hopeful for the future and excited to bring you more updates as we get closer to the release. Thank you for sticking with me through this breakdown of the Gothic Remake demo. Stay tuned for more content, and as always, thanks for watching.